check out this thing on the side of my screen. What could it be? It's a deck tracker. Hi there, I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'd like to talk about deck trackers and how they can help you be the best magic player you can be. This video is sponsored by one such deck tracker, MTGA Assistant. MTGA Assistant was built by the same great team that created Aether Hub, which is another great resource for Magic the Gathering players. So what is a deck tracker? A deck tracker is a program you run while playing Magic the Gathering Arena, and it uses the program's game log files to collect information on the decks you play, the games you play, and your card collection to help you make more informed decisions. As the name suggests, the most basic use of a deck tracker is to keep track of the cards in your deck. Wow, mind-blowing, right? When you're playing a game of Magic, it can be really helpful to know which cards are still in your library. It means you know which cards you have a chance to draw, and knowing what chance you have of drawing each of those specific cards. In many cases, you're looking to line up drawing a land of a certain color, or you're weighing the risks of playing a draw spell over the cards already in your hand. Some people calculate this on the fly, or approximate their chances as they play. If you want to reduce your mental workload, deck trackers can do the math for you. Deck trackers also show you which cards are left in your library, so you can play to your outs. This is especially helpful in singleton formats like Brawl. The only time a deck tracker can't fully track the cards in your library is when they've been exiled face down, due to an effect like Gaunti or Bomat Courier. Because deck trackers use the log file, they can also show you your vault progress. The vault is opened by collecting duplicate commons and uncommons, and when it's full, you get a mythic rare wild card, two rare wild cards, and three uncommon wild cards. You might have a trove of wild cards right around the corner and not even know it. MTGA Assistant also keeps track of your win and loss records against different color combinations, which can help you see how you're faring against the metagame. If you think it might just be you getting those results, you can also take a look at the metagame analysis, which uses the data from all their users to see how each deck matches up against each other deck in the arena queue. Trying to pick a deck to build and bring to the ladder? Don't want to burn too many precious, precious wild cards? The MTGA Assistant can also help you by suggesting popular deck lists sorted by how many of those cards you already own. If you're predominantly a limited player, the deck tracking is actually my favorite feature. It saves the hassle of having to screenshot or memorize every deck you build, and it lets you use cards that tutor or search your library more safely. You don't want to know how many times I've activated Vanifar or Fiend Artisan and failed the search. It feels really stupid when you sacrifice a creature and you don't get a creature back. It can also help you know which answers you have left in your deck so you can choose to dig with the card draw spells or scry to get to the key card that will save your skin or win the game. As somebody who has the memory of a jellyfish, which is to say the memory of a creature with no central nervous system, that tools like MTGA Assistant can be a really great help and also balance the battlefield if you're against somebody who happens to have a particularly gifted memory. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm going to take my terrible memory and use it to forget the last five games I played in the standard queue against Demir Rogues. Now that you sat through the informational portion of the video, I'm actually going to hop into a game using the deck tracker so you can see what it looks like without it just being little example videos. So I'm using my Scootate deck, which is my Scoot Swarm Mutate deck, and I'm just taking it into the ranked queue to see if we can get a nice interesting matchup. Now, this looks like a good hand to me. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. And the reason why I chose this deck to show off the deck tracker is because it draws a lot of cards. It goes through a lot of things. We've got lots and lots of lands. I need to make sure I line up those lands. I have a lot of spells to cast. I have decisions to make. All right, so let's start with our Poliwog symbiote, our baby Godzilla. 
Yeah, but I go through all like half the lands in this deck and I end up forgetting how many basics I have because of course the purpose of this deck is to get a ton of landfall activations off the Lotus Cobra and the Scoot Swarm. Oh my god, look at this. And I can even reference the text on my cards. That's sweet. That's sweet. Okay, so here we go. Lotus Cobra. Get me a land drop. Get some nice green mana. We're going to go ahead and mutate here. I get to draw, I get to drop. I do not think I need the Parcel Beast here. The big purpose of the Parcel Beast is a cheap mutator. And I'm going to add a green mana onto the battlefield, but I'm going to generate blue mana in order to mutate again onto this. Very nice. There's a Lotus Cobra. I think I can go ahead and drop the Cobra here. I want to make sure I'm lining up that Sterix next turn, and I should be well lined up for it. Get more green mana. I need more green than blue, and there's nothing else I can cast. I'll just swing in for one. Nice. And it looks like I'm up against an Ultimatum deck. Storm Shadow, I played against almost all Ultimatum decks today while I was goofing around in the queue. Somebody must have been playing them. Maybe one of the big streamers that was in the queue today popularizing this deck. So I am going to mutate my Sterix onto this Great Horn. And it's being discounted by the Polywog Symbiote. I can drop one of these islands. I don't need both. Here comes the Sterix mutation. Let's see what we get. I really should have ordered these in the other way. So I get the landfall after I get the free spells. But I didn't. The reason for that is in case I get a Scoot Swarm for free. Okie dokie. Gonna go ahead and mutate on that again. We draw, we drop. I still have not had a landfall yet this turn. They're both triggering. This is not a May. This is not a May ability. This time I'll do it the right order. So we want the free permanents first. Hoping to get a Scoot Swarm. Did not get a Scoot Swarm. Got a bunch of Fabled Passages. Can use those to thin the deck. But really right now, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and activate this. I want a Scoot Swarm. That's not a Scoot Swarm. But it is another Mutator. It's being double discounted by the Polywog Symbiotes. I'm gonna drop that Temple of Mystery. I got a Pouncing Shore Shark. That is yet another mutate. And this is where, again, like I have a now 12.9% chance of getting a Scoot Swarm. I care very much about that. That is the keystone of the deck. And I forgot to order those. That's fine. All right, what did we get here? Oh my goodness, sweet mother of landfalls. Well, it'll be just great. Our opponent conceded! But I knew my chances! That's what's great. It's like the next four cards that are being exiled off the top, they're all going to be permanents because this deck is just permanents. It's, it's lands and creatures. I've got Amori as a companion here. And it's... It's really cool to be able to see, like, oh, I mutated four times, so I'm going to get four permanents. What are my chances of getting each of these permanents? I really like using a deck tracker for this deck, and now you've seen it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's a shame this opponent conceded before I could continue my 20-minute long turn, but I bet you got to enjoy it, right? Thank you again to MTGA Assistant for sponsoring this video, and I hope you all have a very magical day. Bye!